we are back with another video that is uh, this will be based on the graphs and uh, this will be the tutorial discussion three actually we have done two tutorials uh, based on graphs right so it's pvt and this would focus uh, mainly on uh, at all right so let's see what it is yes. so let's get started with right let's get started with um so it says the graph in the figure shows the variation of velocity of a body choose the acceleration time graph choose the acceleration time graph of the corresponding body right so that is what is uh, asked here right so we'll see what we could do so yeah uh, it says um, right so they have given the vt graph and we have to choose the vt graph right so uh, i'll teach you guys a very simple method to uh, try this out right so it's like it's like this so uh, first of all like from a vt graph and right, if you take a vt graph from a vt graph how do how can we go for an at graph actually you have to check the gradient gradient of the vt graph right gradient of the vt graph gives the acceleration right so gradient of the vt graph gives the acceleration right so all these are if you see constant accelerations if you see all these are constant accelerations sorry constant gradients in the in the vt graph in the vt graph all these are constant accelerations sorry constant gradients if it is constant gradients, it should be constant accelerations, constant acceleration. So therefore, this will not be the answer. This will not be the answer because like here yeah, the, the the accelerations are not constant, right? So it should okay. This should this will also not be the answer, right? So of course, this is also not going to be the answer. So either the second answer or the third answer, right? For so first of all, we can do this based on the based on the uh, gradient, right? So I'll consider this as the first one, second gradient, third gradient, fourth gradient. Right. So if we if we look at the first gradient, and right, if we look at the first gradient, right, it's something like this. Right. So uh, I'll take this as theta. Right. So uh, tan theta equals to acceleration is equal to so a higher value minus a lower value. Higher value minus a lower value means positive. Right. So obviously. This is a higher value minus a lower value, right? Higher value minus a lower value means it's going to be positive. So here, what is this thing? A uh, lower value minus a higher value. When we take like obviously tan theta means opposite to adjacent, right? Or tan theta means opposite to adjacent. So opposite is higher value minus lower value. Adjacent, when you take the adjacent, lower value minus lower value minus see lower value minus higher value, which means it is negative. So what should be the answer here the acceleration of the first part will be negative right acceleration of the first part will be negative right so if you see okay both the first part has negative acceleration so right next from the next thing we can uh, figure out what the graph is so if we see this uh, what is the what is this this is a minus value right gradient is minus this minus this a negative value minus like a higher negative value minus a lower negative value right so tan uh, theta 2 let's assume right acceleration right uh, if you see this all right uh, opposite over adjacent you need to take opposite over adjacent right so opposite is a higher negative value right a higher negative value minus zero a higher negative value minus zero that will be the final answer the sign negative right you can put something like uh, minus 10 minus 0 uh, my answer is minus 10 so the so opposite over adjacent adjacent is a higher value minus a lower value right higher value minus a lower value so it should be what it should be plus a higher value minus a lower value means plus so in that case once again a2 is also negative right so a2 so the second part is also it should be negative so this is not going to be negative right so therefore this is not the answer so this is negative so we can go with the second answer right so you don't have to worry about the rest of the uh, things right so this gives the answer i hope you understood right let's move on to the right so uh so in this question of course they have given okay we'll see what it is first let's read it a particle starts from rest okay at equal zero it starts from rest remember this right it's very important moves in a straight line right okay with an acceleration as shown in the figure Right, we need to find the velocity at the third second. So they have given us the A T graph, A T graph, and they are asking us to find the velocity at the at the third second. How can you find the velocity? So obviously you know 
if we are given with a VT graph, right? So by chance, if we are given with a VT graph, right? If a VT graph is given from the gradient of the VT graph, right? We are going to get what? The acceleration. We are going to get the acceleration. So, uh, so then if the uh, if the AT graph is given, right? If the AT graph is given, right? Actually, uh, from the area of the like, for example, if the acceleration is constant, right? For example, uh, it was let's assume it was constant for t uh, zero time, right? So let's shall we see what is given from the area, right? Shall we get the area of this? Let's assume the acceleration is a naught, right? Uh, a naught into t naught. Area is what? Area is a naught into t naught, right? So if you see, if you see, area is equal to a naught into t naught, right? So obviously, right? Obviously, uh, also if you see acceleration is what acceleration is change of velocity divided by time taken right so if we see uh, you know t naught right so delta v or if the change of velocity is given by a naught into t naught so what is the area going to give us area is going to give us delta v or else the area of an at graph is going to give us the change in velocity right the change in the velocity so this pass actually gives us the change in the velocity, right? Change in the velocity, not the velocity, it gives us the change of the velocity, change in how much it changed by, right? So, okay, that is very important, that thing, right? So, initially, uh, let's assume initially at t equals zero, at t equals zero, the object was at rest, right? Initially, the object was at rest. Now, uh, it was at rest. So, for two seconds, it maintains this velocity. For two seconds, for two seconds, it maintains three uh, meter per square second acceleration. So from the from the area of the uh, graph, right area of this part for two seconds, what would it give? How much the velocity changed? How much the velocity changed, right? For t equal two seconds, right? Within t equal two seconds, right? For example, for t equal two seconds, if you consider, right? It maintained an acceleration of Three meter per square second, right? So it initially started from zero. We need to find what the velocity here is, right? How will we find it? I told you the change in velocity, the change in velocity within two seconds is given from the area, right? Three into two, right? Simply a into t, right? So okay. Uh, so the change in velocity is six meter per second. Okay. So obviously, if this is if this was zero, if initial velocity was zero. And if the change is six meter per second, which means the current speed should be what now? The current speed should be the current speed should be six meters per second. Then only the change is going to be six meter per second. All right. Okay. So all right, fine. Okay. So that we have found now currently at t equal two second, the, uh, the velocity of the uh, object is six meter per second, and we need to find three. So what does this mean? So this like this change of velocity is a negative change. Right, which means like this is a deceleration. We could consider this to be as a deceleration, right? This this could we could consider this to be as a deceleration because it was initially moving in the forward direction. Suddenly, acceleration is negative means uh, the possible thing is it's decelerating, right? So let's assume that it is decelerating. Uh, if it is decelerating, right? If it is decelerating, uh, the change is negative, right? In that case, right? Delta v uh, from T equal two to t equal three seconds delta v change in velocity is a into t the area right the area area right so delta v is going to be what uh, the acceleration was minus three given and the time was one second right the acceleration was minus three time was one second right so the change should be okay minus uh, at t equal three seconds. At t equal, so initially at t equal two seconds, right? At t equal two seconds, uh, the vehicle had a speed of six meters per second. The vehicle had a, uh, the, the the object has a, had a uh, speed of six meters per second. So at t equal three seconds, then it should decrease by minus three. So then, what is the current speed? So from six, if you subtract three more, uh, three three more units, it is currently three meters per second, right? So yes, because from positive six, you have to subtract three. The change should be three. So this minus this is going to be minus three. Like usually the final velocity minus the initial velocity is the change of velocity, right? 
3 minus minus 6, 3 minus 6 is minus 3. Okay, so the answer should be. So I guess that was clear. All right, so this is also a similar question. Let's see what it is. Uh, so they are saying a particle starts from base. Goes and acceleration shown if the accelerates initially for two seconds, and we should assume like it decelerates for the next remaining two seconds, right? So yes, uh, find the displacement and velocity. Find the displacement and find the displacement and the velocity of the particle at the end of each second and indicate in a table. We have to find the uh, like it's like this. You know, we have to uh, draw a table, right? So acceleration, velocity, and displacement, right? We have to. Uh, we might have to draw a table right ah, okay so we will have to uh, include the time axis time as well right so let's uh, include that too right uh, to define yeah the time then the acceleration then the velocity and then the displacement so initially time one two Uh, for the research small issue that is mm, here of course the value of the uh, acceleration is not clear right we will assume it to be as plus 10 and this is the uh, negative of it minus 10 right minus 10 plus 10 and minus 10 all right okay uh, fine so let's move on let's move on right so here Yes, so fine, right. So let us see how to do that. So within the first second, if we need to find, so initially the vehicle, the, the, the this starts from zero, right? So zero. Now let's see at uh, t equals zero, zero velocity, t equal one, what's the velocity? We see. So I have told you, so the area of an AT graph gives us the change in velocity. So uh, within the first second, what is the change in velocity? Change in velocity is the area, 10 into one so within the first second its velocity is changed by uh, 10 meters per second so from zero if it is changed by 10 meters per second at this point the velocity should be 10 meters per second right when the acceleration is 10 velocity is also 10 right so we need to find the uh, displacement right so we need to find the displacement obviously the displacement is given how if we know the velocity right and if you know that, for example, now let's assume you are given with a VT graph, right? Uh, VT graph, right? Uh, at a certain moment, it had zero and uh, somehow it reached 10 meters per second within one, right? This is what is it. The, 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 this is a constant acceleration, uh, constant acceleration, right? So this is a VT graph. So in a VT graph, how do you find the displacement actually? How do you find the displacement from the, from the area? Right, from the area right because like uh, speed equals distance divided by displacement divided by time taken right so if you need to find the displacement it is the so this it's let's say v uh, velocity is equal to displacement divided by time taken displacement is velocity into time right so vt graph v into t gives us what right velocity into time uh, the area of the uh st8 vt graph gives us the uh displacement right so the displacement simply all right so what is the area here area is actually half into base into perpendicular height that is five meters so we have to mark this as five meters right five meters all right fine fine so let us move on now uh fine uh the next thing is i will not complete everything right so i will just uh, give you a heads up small heads up you need to take this area right so at t equal one second, it had the velocity of 10 meters per second. Now at t equal two second, right? We need to find the velocity, right? So simply we need to find the change in velocity. What the change in velocity? Change in velocity once again is what? One second, uh, the acceleration is 10. So acceleration into time is within that second, acceleration further uh, changed by 10 meters per second. So if the if the at t equal one second, if it was 10, at t equal two second, it should be what then? It should change by 10, it should be 20. So this is 
20 right further in the second uh, it's like it's performing the same motion right so we need to find the uh, displacement covered so at that point displacement means this total displacement from the initial point so what is the uh, area simply area is going to be what half into base is 2 into perpendicular half into base into perpendicular height is obviously we have found uh, at the second second uh, the speed uh, the, the velocity is 20 so half into base into perpendicular height what is it 20 meters right 20 meters so this should be 20 meters mm. all right fine so next what happens next obviously the speed actually the, the, the acceleration is going to be uh, negative which means it's decelerating right now the change in velocity is a uh, deceleration actually right change in velocity delta v is minus 10 into 1 right the velocity changes by uh, changes by 10 meter per second it reduces it reduces by 10 meters per second so at the second second right at the second second at the at the, at the equal to uh, the a particle had a 20 meters per second velocity now at t equal 3 right it should reduce by 10 meters per second it should reduce by 10 meters per second so if it is reducing what should be the current speed, uh, velocity simply 10 meters per second from 20 it should reduce to from 20 it should reduce to 10 right so it's like this it's like this it's reducing up to once again 10 at the third second so we need to uh yeah so this is v t graph so uh this is positive displacement that we will we will mark it then the acceleration is minus 10 the velocity is uh 10 actually right when the acceleration is i mean at the third second the velocity is 10 we need to find the displacement right we need to find the so how do we find the displacement at the third second at the third second how do we find the displacement we need to get the total area of all these right so we know up to the second second up to the second second it has moved 20 meters right shall we find the area of this trapezium right shall we find the area of this trapezium what is it it is going to be right area is going to be uh area of this third trapezium right um half into what is the perpendicular height one right the perpendicular height is one what is the parallel sides okay this is 10 10 plus and then this is 20 right 20 so, so simply this is 15 right if you simplify so already it has moved 20 meters further it moves 15 meters right so the current speed the current displacement is what uh 20 plus 15 is 35 meters and 35 meters so similarly feel the third one also right so it's uh, pretty simple i guess i hope you understood that all right so let's move on to this problem all right so it says a train moves from one station to another station in two hours okay it uh, its velocity during the motion is given in the graph right so okay this is given in the graph right velocity is in uh, kilometers per hour and time is in given in hours what we need to find is the maximum acceleration during the journey we need to find the maximum acceleration during the journey okay so in a vt graph as always right in a vt graph as always uh in a vt graph as always right uh gradient gives us what gradient gives us the acceleration right so if we need to find the maximum acceleration right if we need to find the maximum acceleration what do we have to find we will have to find the maximum but maximum gradient who gives the maximum gradient right simply maximum gradient means what who has the maximum inclination right which part of the motion has the maximum inclination with the x-axis right so is this the maximum inclination or is this the maximum inclination or this is this maximum inclination? what do you think obviously this is the maximum inclination because it has it has inclined uh it has it has inclined the inclination of it is considerably high right see if you see right rather than this or rather than this right so fine how do we find the maximum acceleration we have to find the gradient so opposite is 60 minus 20 on the adjacent is 0 
right? So acceleration, right? Therefore, max acceleration simply is uh, 60, right? Is it no 60 minus 20? Okay, 60 minus 20, 0 0.25. This is given in kilometers per hour. This is in hours, 40 divided by, right? Uh, 1 over 4, like 0 0.25 means 1 over 4. This is 160 kilometers per hour minus 2. Okay, right? uh, so this would be the answer for the first question. So next, what they're saying is, right? Uh, the distance covered during the time interval 0 0.75 to 1 hour, the distance covered. So if you need to find the distance covered, it is simply this area, right? Like simply this area, right? Finding that area is somewhat easy because like we have analyzed a lot of questions, some similar questions, right? So it is a like, uh, so the distance travel simply, I will if I quickly find it, right? V bar, uh, distance traveled is simply given from the area, right? Area of the trapezium, right? So half into, what is the base? Base of the trapezium, base of the, like half into perpendicular height of the trapezium is what? Uh, 0.25, right? It is 0 0.25, 0 0.25 means one over four, right? Fine, for the timing, let's write it as 0.25. And then the parallel sides should be added 20 plus 60, right? 20 plus, 20 plus 60, 20 plus 60. This should be added 20 plus 60, right? So 1 over 2 into 1 over 4 into 80. Right? This two, uh, this cancels 20. This two, this cancels 10. So the answer will be 10 kilometers. Right? So the distance traveled is within, within this time interval is 10 kilometers. Right? So I guess that is clear. Right. Right. So here, this is actually a password question. You'll see what it says. In which VT graph shown below with the average velocity, the average velocity over the entire period T1 and T2 equal to the average velocity, average velocity uh, of the two velocities at the ends A and B. Now, this is actually a difficult question, right? So, to be honest, we need to analyze this properly in order to understand it well. Let's assume this is V1 and V2, right? V1, V1, V2, right? So here, V1, V2, the same, right? So here also, V1 and V2 is the same. Here, V1, this is V2, right? So as they say, what they're saying is the average velocity over the entire, entire motion between T1 to T2, uh, equal to the average of the two velocities. Okay, average of the two velocities at, at A and B is what? Average of two velocities at A and B? Average of velocities at end A and B is what actually? It is simply V1 plus V2 over 2. Right? V1 plus V2 over uh, 2. That is the uh, average right average between these two velocities all right okay so right in that case right so if you see out of these all these all these curves right what would give us this kind of a uh, velocity simply what they're asking is average of average of two velocities at A and B. What is the average at A? V1. Average at B? V2. So average at average of the velocities at A and B. What is it? V1 plus V2 over 2. Because the, the velocity at A is V1, the velocity at v, v, B is V2. So they are asking the average of those two. Okay, average it is. Uh, what? Like this will be equal to which graph? I mean, which graph would give us uh, which one? So they are saying uh, should like in which velocity time graph sh shown below would the average velocity over the entire period average velocity of over the entire motion is given from what 
average velocity over the entire motion is given from average velocity of entire motion is given from which equation we have learned this entire motion is given from uh, total displacement right total displacement over total time taken right if i see like obviously we can't find the to like total displacement means what total displacement means the average the, the area 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 that's a vt graph displacement total displacement between this time interval is from the area so if you see obviously finding the area of this is not going to be possible and also like if you see the area of this right it's quite familiar what is the it's a trapezium how to find the area half into basis uh, perpendicular is t2 minus t1 into v1 plus v2 right half into perpendicular height into t1 plus v1 plus v2 over the total time taken is what total time taken is t2 minus t1 that gives you the time taken so these two these cancels so half v1 plus v2 so you can see right the average velocity of the motion or average velocity of the complete motion average velocity of the complete motion is equal to the average velocity of the complete motion this is equal to the average velocity average of the velocities at a and b at a and b this was a question on 2003 14th one so you need to see this is at the very latter part somewhat difficult right most of the students got uh, kind of got confused with this question like if you find the areas of these guys they will never give you this kind of an answer this or this or this or this will never give this kind of an answer right? so only this is going to give such an answer right hope you understood so <clears throat> let's see what the next problem is it says a person drops an object mm -hmm. okay he drops an object means uh, okay fine and throws an object vertically downwards from a certain height which of the following graphs best represents the motion of the two right uh, a is the dropped object b is the thrown object this is a very very simple question answer uh, question guys right because you know so a certain object a is dropped which means and then another object b is thrown right from a certain height both are subjected to the same gravitational acceleration right so they both the vt both the curves should have the same gradient so so obviously this is not the answer 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 because the gradients are different right and also a starts from zero now okay starts from zero and has a certain gradient that same grade oh, so b starts from a velocity u right at t equals zero and has the same gradient because like gradient gives the acceleration here yeah, the acceleration is common to both so both should have the same gradient so the answer should be one so that will be it what we would discuss guys uh hopefully i guess you got something out of this uh, we would meet with our next uh, tutorial discussion Thank